let's quickly say the environment let's not have uh, use all the 30 minutes that we have uh, probably because both both of them are important so let's learn how to save environment quickly in 10 15 minutes instead of 30 minutes and then save the remaining 15 minutes for lunch so win win right cool let's start with a very small question right have has any one of you heard about something called as green software before no very simple no a software which is having a green background no yeah Yeah, so uh, yeah, good good answers. Like uh, less line of a code is also a very good answer. I mean, green green. Uh, the lesser you write, the lesser it emits a carbon. So the, it's a green. But yeah, the coming to back to the official answer to this is right. A software which emits less carbon is called as a green software, not the one which is having a green background. <laughs> so those are two different things. And and you heard a lot about it from the keynote from Vanya and Barini, right? In in a sustainability thing. That software industry is uh, almost 3% responsible of uh, global carbon emission, which is somewhere uh, very near to aviation industry. I mean, I mean, you see that, okay, aircrafts are flying and lots of things are coming out of it and, and then lots of carbon is emitting. But do you know software is also emitting carbon? Right? Did you ever think about that? So, I was thinking that I developed a software. But then I, when I see after developing a software, nothing is coming out. Uh, the emission is not coming out. Then how, how does it how, how does it emit carbon? What's what's happening? Any guesses? Hardware. So why are the people not calling green hardware for green hard? What is green hardware? Why are they calling green software? Actually, people did a mistake. No, they should call green hardware. Why green software? Okay, software that runs a hardware, right? yeah, really, really good answer. So basically, let's consider some of the hardware, right? Let's take an example of a laptop. A laptop is, you, when a laptop is sitting idle, when, you, when it is open, when the screen is open and when you start the laptop, right? Let's consider that it is using some kind, some amount of an energy, some amount of an electricity. Now that electricity, to generate that particular electricity, some amount of a carbon would have been emitted, right? So that is a carbon emitted per... Uh, run, sitting, uh, running your laptop. So we let's call it as a base carbon emission, like like something which is a base. Now you run your software on top of that laptop. Let's say let's say you you create an API. Let's call it as a product API, which is giving a list of products. Right? You are developing that. So let's run a product, get product API on top of the laptop. Will it be still using the same battery? Because will it be using same RAM, same hard disk? No. Yes. It will increase. So RAM will be increased, hard disk usage will be increased. That means the more battery usage. That means that is resulting in more carbon emission. That means your software is emitting carbon via hardware. Right? What we are not talking here is let's create a really good hardware that create a, that 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 uh, uh, probably emits less carbon. What we are talking is compared to the base hardware carbon emission, let's create a software which will emit little lesser carbon. Right, but uh, actually, I want to create a software that will emit less carbon. But how would I know how much carbon my my software is emitting? Right. If you can't measure it, you can't improve it. Right. Because why I'm worried about it? I I want to measure it and I I, I want to improve on it. Can I calculate that? Can I calculate the emission that my software is? Uh, can I calculate the carbon that my software is emitting? That's where. Um, something called as green software foundation come into the picture so green software foundation is created by some uh, of the very large organization in the industry like microsoft thoughtworks uh, thoughtworks is one of the founding member of that github so some of the company went together and said that let's create a standard uh, so that people write a software which is emitting a less carbon and one of them one of the standards main area was that okay we are we are preaching people about uh, you, sh you should have little lesser carbon emission. We are preaching about how should you reduce the carbon emission. But before that, can we also have a standard on how to calculate the carbon emission? That's that's a first step, right? Because if you can't measure it, you can't improve it. So that's a first step. Let's start try calculating that. And the standard that Green Software Foundation created 
is called a software carbon intensity specification. Uh, basically, uh, that's what we're going to talk about, that what is SCI and how do you calculate SCI for your software? So software carbon intensity specification, uh, as it says, it defines the rate of a carbon emission created by your software. Here, right, the rate word is very, very important. Uh, it's not an absolute number. It's a rate. Now, rate of what? I think we'll try to cover it sooner. But uh, that's a, basically a pretty much definition of a software carbon intensity uh, specification. But it is using a really good word, right? Software system. What is software system? Can somebody answer that? What is, what is uh, calculating the rate of carbon emission for a software system? Yeah, it has used that word. What is a software system? Is it the code that I'm, let, let's take the same example, right? Get product API. Is it the API I'm writing? Uh, okay, let's say I have written the API into something called a Spring Boot. Is it the code that Spring Boot has written? Let's say I'm developing it into the, I'm deploying it into the Kubernetes. Is it the Kubernetes? Because, is, is it the Kubernetes code that, that, that probably Google team has written? What is it that I should consider? What, what is it that I should consider and what is it that I should not? But, which part of a software? That is the causing, yes, but let's say if I'm running a Kubernetes on a software, Kubernetes is also emitting some carbon on the top of the hardware. It's end-to-end, it's end -to -end, right? So what is it that I should calculate and what is it that I should focus at a time? So, yeah, sorry. Yeah, so some, so that's where the standard, create when, when the SCI standard was created, what they told is, you worry about one thing at a time. You need to calculate everything. But at a time, you need to worry about only one thing. So let's say, I, I want to calculate SCI for storage that I'm using for my software. So, so only worry about that. You forget about everything else. Or let's say I want to uh, create a software carbon intensity for an API that I'm creating or the library that I'm using. Take one thing as a boundary of a software system and only worry about that thing for uh, at, at a point of a time. So that is called a software boundary. Software boundary is one of the most important thing to figure out before calculating the software carbon intensity. You figure out that, okay, right now I'm worried about the boundary one. You take that as a, as, as a boundary and then calculate a intensity on top of that. Now, for, for moving forward, like, like to understand that, let's take software boundary as a get product API, only the software that I am writing. Let's forget about the Spring Boot. Let's forget about the storage. You need to do that for the storage also. You need to do that for hardware also. You need to do that for network also. Uh, that way you need to calculate a carbon intensity uh, specification for different different software boundary okay so let's take an example that we are we are taking software boundary as the product api that i have written forget about the spring boot forget about the kubernetes forget about the ci cd pipeline everything on production i am running a product api and i want to calculate a carbon intensity for that let's uh, just just as an example to go for the future slides now one more question i uh, i am getting here is right uh, Okay, I have a get product API. Uh, in, in, I deployed it in, into one of the system uh, for, for easy understanding, right? Let's take an example of laptop only. So earlier we spoke about that there is an idle sitting laptop without API. We calculated the intensity for that. Then there is a soft, then we, I deployed the product API on top of it and I calculated the carbon intensity of it. So the difference between those two is giving me the intensity of my product API. Will it be same in all the cases? What if the number of products are increasing? No, it will be different, right? What if the number of API calls are increasing? More API calls are coming, right? So the carbon intensity also differs, even if you have chosen the software boundary, even on the same exact same software boundary, the, the intensity that we are seeing, the rate of carbon emission that we are seeing, that will differ. And what it depends on is exact same thing, that we are worried about scalability. When we want to scale a software, when, when we use a scalability in our DevOps world, we also worry about very similar thing. In the language of SCI specification, we call it as functional unit, a smaller unit on which the intensity matters, right? So let's take an example of same get product API. So for, for the get product API, if I have to calculate the SCI, I will take one of the small functional unit that Five APIs calls are coming on a daytime 
for 10 products I am returning. For that, I will calculate SCI. That is my rate on, on which I am calculating the SCI. And whenever you, so the standard is saying, right, that you keep calculating it, keep improving it and then keep uh, recalculating it so that you see that improvements. So whenever you recalculate, right, one thing which always should remain constant is R. R cannot be changed. So it's it's called as a uh, functional unit, the smaller unit that that is uh, that you are choosing. So again, uh, for the future slide, let's take an example of five. I am returning five product, five API calls on a day time for five hours. I'm calculating the carbon intensity for that. This are this are this are something that we normally use, right? But as a scalability factor. Understood? Any question on R? Pretty clear? Okay, I understood R. I have taken five product API. What should I calculate? Carbon again, it's not coming out of my laptop, no? Right? The, the emission is not coming out of my laptop. What should I calculate? Sorry? How about storage? How much storage I'm using? That's my one of the software boundary. But I, I right now I'm targeting the software boundary as my get product API. Uh, then while running my product API, I don't know, I mean, how much emission is coming. How do I calculate that? Correct. Yeah, so I, sh I should be calculating that without running my API, how much power I am using uh, versus how much power I am using while running the API. Very, very simple. I should just use uh, energy, how much energy I am using. Now, there are two different ways of calculating the energy. One is called as, sorry, yeah. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, so I, I was telling about that, that there are two, two things here, right? One is a systems which are handy, which are in your hand. Then you have, can apply very, very simple mathematics. You can just apply a voltmeter and see how the difference is coming. But then the second kind of a system, right? Uh, the, the VMs, the clouds, right? How do you do that in cloud? That's where the cloud providers comes to the rescue to you. All of the cloud provider, almost all major four cloud provider have created uh, a space in their cloud websites where you can see that how much how much energy your VMs or your, your things are consuming when, whenever you are using that. You can just take that and put it inside E. Uh, probably you can also call their APIs and, and uh, I don't know how much of an APIs are available, dashboards are still available. But you can call their API and put that uh, in, into your calculations. So that's how you get energy. But let's say you're not working with four major cloud provider. You're working with, you're still working with clouds. The system is not with you. And you're not working with four major cloud providers who is not giving this data that how much, how much energy I'm consuming. At least every cloud provider, what they give is, right? What is the specification of your hardware? Let's say you, you uh, let's take an example that you're using a VM. Or, or let's say you're using a Kubernetes in that you will be using nodes. And nodes will be eventually a VM. So at least what they will provide is what is the hardware that you are using. And most of the hardware provider provides that data available that let's say there is a DDR4 RAM. DDR4 RAM, if it is being used for, uh, uh, if one GB of the RAM is being used for one hour, this much uh, of the energy it will be using. That data is available for most of the hardware now. So you can take that data and calculate E. So that's nothing but your E. E is, I think, pretty simple to calculate, right? E is energy, right? Energy is kilowatt hour. How do I calculate my energy to the carbon emission? Or, or, or is it like energy is equal to carbon emission? Is it like a green gas is seen? How, how do I calculate that? Huh, that's, so more resources you use, more energy will consume. You got to know energy, but I got, I want to know the carbon emission from that energy. Huh. I want to calculate that. How much carbon is it taking for one kilowatt hour? Let's say I'm using one kilowatt hour en energy. I got to know that. Now one kilowatt hour, how much uh, uh, gram of c uh, CO2 it's emitting? CO2 equivalent it is emitting, not, not only CO2. Huh. So how do you know that? Uh, that how much energy it is using to generate that carbon? Yeah, Googling. <laughs> nice. Okay, there, there, is, there isn't any actual formula, but every region has a standard 
that uh, per region standard. Uh, so let's let's take an example of Australia, right? So if your data center is in Australia, you can easily get the standard that how much energy, how much uh, carbon is emitted per kilowatt of energy for that particular region. In the calculation of SCI, it is called as I, right? And together, E into I is also called as O, operational emissions. So basically, how much of a carbon emission you're doing for your operations. Uh, so this this is a very simple standard that you can uh, easily get. So now okay, now I got this formula that okay I I need no carbon emission per kilowatt. I know kilowatts, so I can get a carbon emission. Yes, you will get it. Uh, every region will have a. Uh, I wouldn't say India would have a standard, but rather than that, your your data center, let's say you're using Azure Mumbai data center, so that that will have a standard that how much of an energy, how how green the, that data center is, etc. So you will get on the standards. Yes. 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 Yeah. 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 I mean, uh, there are people who are saying that can I make I to zero? If you make I to zero, how much of our energy you are consuming? Zero into I E will become zero. So if you make I zero, it will become zero. But uh, at least in my experience, I haven't seen in an ideal world I becoming zero. Like like everything is in solar. The whole data center is in solar. The whole power is coming from solar, and then everything. Which is shipped is also via solar energy and like, like full zero I. I haven't seen in my experience, but like you're asking, right? If you make I zero automatically I into E, whatever E you use, it will become zero. It will it it can go to the zero, but but not not practically yet. Uh, not practically yet available right now. Exactly. That's that's what I'm saying. Practically, I zero is not available right now. Okay. Yeah. Uh, quickly, let's go to the last thing. I'm also manufacturing my devices, right? Some of the VMs that I'm using, I'm also manufacturing those VMs. So uh, that's where that's called as embodied uh, emission here. Uh, so that's also uh, being uh, included in the calculation. Embodied emissions directly are available as a carbon footprint. So you don't need to just take out as an energy and then calculate it as uh, as I. So this is the final formula of SCI. Uh, uh, take take it and then probably uh, some of the advice I would love to give to all of you is try including this into your day-to-day -day job. Uh, you would have heard from Vanya, right? Try putting it as a fitness function, create a CI-CD pipeline, try having a dashboards of how much uh, carbon you are emitting. There will be a very soon regulations across the regions that uh, for a company, right, it will be compulsory to uh, report how much carbon you are em em emitting. So you need to quantify for your different different software boundaries, uh, make a plus of it, and then create some kind of a dashboard which will tell how much your carbon your company is emitting, and then you will have to report it very soon. So those are some of the recommendations I have.